So we are going to start our talk with a question. question? Yeah. <laughs> we'll start with a question for the group. Who here has seen double when they were drunk? One, two, three, three four, four, five, five six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, eleven. Now, who has seen double when they're not drunk? Like intentionally? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. We have more hands than before. This is. This is good. I'm seeing double right now. <laughs> 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 yes, that that is Perfect. that is probably the most common usage of that term is for twins. Because yes. talking about seeing double when you're drunk and or when you're not drunk happens all the time. It's happening, in fact, every moment of the day, but it doesn't really get spoken about. Well, it seems like you guys are pretty much aware of this double, doubling phenomenon, basically coming from the fact that you're seeing the world with two eyes. Mm -hmm. um, so people may or may not be more aware that you can even control this, this binocular splitting at will. Um, so, well, and even more so, it, it happens, it's really, it's happening, it happens at every moment of the day, but your brain actively represses one of the image. One of the images, your dominant eye, broadcasts its image and your recessive eye represses its image. Yeah. Um, you sort of use this double, your, your binocular doubling, to construct depth in your brain, and then you kind of only perceive one, one image of the world, even though you're effectively getting two images of the world at all times. Mm -hmm. um, so it, this is the sort of jumping off point that uh, is, um, we've developed a body of artwork around. Mm -hmm. um, but before we get to that, we're going to just go through a few historical <coughs> examples that we've dug for and found that may or may not be reflecting people's awareness of this um, binocular doubling. Here we have cave art from the, this cave was discovered in France recently. Um, it's very, it's a big, big discovery. Sh Chevette Caves? So, yes, yeah, something like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we noticed that there's these, these animal images which are kind of repeated. And there's another one over here. He's got, it's, they're, they're, you know, it's sort of the same image twice. Um, and of course we can't know exactly why Caveman would have drawn the same image twice, but we theorize that it might just be in expressing their awareness of binocularity, expressing their experience of that. Um, so here's another example of, um, of artists dealing with binocularity. This is an excerpt from Lawrence Weschler's book about Robert Irwin. Has anybody heard of Robert Irwin? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and quickly it says, Irwin, who was fascinated by the ability of the two eyes to integrate their separate perceptions, mastered a technique for separating their focus. Both Wurtz, Wurtz is a scientist he's working with, and I learned how to do this, he claims. We taught ourselves by placing a dot on a window and gazing both at, at and beyond it, thus allowing two planes of focus, one for each eye or else by staring at a single pencil long enough to become conscious of the separate images we were receiving from each of our eyes. I can still do it anytime I want. He's in his 70s now. Um, it takes a few minutes concentration, but I can just separate them. For example, having one eye register foreground and the other background. Mm -hmm. um, so th this little exercise actually might even be useful for us to all try right now. Um, while you're looking up here, hold, hold, instead of a pencil, hold your finger or any object directly in your line of sight. Um, and then do you see that while you're, while you're focusing beyond your finger, um, your finger splits into two images. And of those two Im images, they are both also transparent. If you place either of them directly over top of one of us or the screen, you can see the screen through, through your finger. Through your transparent finger. OK, keep that in mind. Um, so, effectively, when you are viewing the world binocularly at every point every day, what happens is that, uh, well, one of, the, one of the many things that happens is that your nose, your singular nose, mm. becomes split and appears on both ends of your vision. It, sort of, it sort of brackets your depth perception. Um, just as your single finger divided into two throughout 
your, your single nose divides into double and appears in your vision on either side. So if you close your eyes back and forth, you can see your nose jump from side to side. And then when both eyes are open, you're seeing two transparent noses bracketing your vision and being a, kind of an omnipresent feature, which is stabilizing your view. Mm. It's like your nose is kind of the first beacon as you look out into the world. Um, we here <laughs> have diagrammed Trevor's nose profile on, mm -hmm. on either side. Um, and so you can sort of see the ball of his nose, the tip of his nose, the bridge, and then going across the eyebrow, and the same thing on the other side. So this would represent Trevor's field of depth perception, and then these would be the monocular zones to the right and left sides. Um, now, given, uh, given that that's the first <clears throat> shape in your, in your vision throughout the entirety of your life, um, we started noticing, well, we theorized that that shape pops up in art pretty regularly. Um, we, we notice it in abstract compositions um, that, that this, this sort of red shape down in the corner po could possibly be there, both as an element that kind of stabilizes the composition and makes it feel anchored, but could, could be based on the bi biological anatomy of the fact that you can see your nose in your, in your vision. Sort of a subconscious um, anchoring technique to put some kind of blocking shapes down in the corner of a composition. Um, so etching by Rembrandt. And we have a similar shape over here. Mm. Th uh. This is to say that while Rembrandt was arranging the folds in his garment, when they felt most stable when they also harmonized with the shape of, the his, shape nose. of, the shape of his vision. Rembrandt has a kind of bulbous nose. We have a kind of bulbous shape down here. These are one-to-one -one relationships. <laughs> <laughs> This is a painting by Matisse, and again, we have this sort of nose-ish shape happening down in the corner. It's a, it's, I mean, pictorially, it's the chair of an arm. It's an arm, yes, the chair of an arm. Um, <laughs> wait, that doesn't make sense. Okay. Um, so, but it looks, it's, it's, it's apparently like Matisse's nose shape. Mm. We also know from seeing photos of Matisse. Furthermore. Yes, one step further. That... <laughs> Matisse wears round spectacles. So his world would be seen all the time through a round lens and then have his nose bracketed to either side. Um, here's proof. <laughs> um, so, so, taking this one step further, it, uh, it occurred to me, looking at the previous painting, that Matisse may have also included somewhat the round his round spectacle. Um, now this would of course be subconscious, but I mean, the evidence seems to be there. We, we have, so we've got his, you know, his full round spectacle, and then you've got the eyebrow kind of curling over and his nose, and um, it's just, it just seems to be that in, in Matisse, you know, intuitively deriving composition, he's made it harmonize with his kind of visual experience of the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so, so the two of us, um, coming along later on, figured out a way to use this, this binocular splitting mm -hmm. as a tool to create art itself, mm -hmm. as kind of the first, first optical tool with which we could create drawings or paintings. Mm -hmm. um, the technique works somewhat, somewhat like this, um, as outlined quickly on this napkin. <laughs> um, so if you have a piece of paper, and, and like your finger, you, you, you have your two eyes and you look past the edge of the paper to some object in the distance, the paper, instead of your finger, will split into two images, and your, a pen, also if you had a pen held to the paper, would split into two images, and you could use that doubling transparency effect to create a drawing of, 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 the, of the couch. Um, but it, you, this is, in fact, a, a drawing that was traced through that sheet of paper. Yes. This is the drawing with which this diagram represents how it was drawn. <laughs> the drawing was done first. The diagram was drawn second. 